Hey, Bubba. Your car's looking pretty rough here. Well, good news. I now have a video using regular engine oil as undercoating to preserve your next one. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough on engine oil undercoating. I'm going to show you what I use and this vehicle here is a testimony to how good it works. Now this oiling thing really don't need to be done every year. Whatever you have at your fingertips for use is beneficial no matter what, even on a car that's already starting to rust. I'm going to show you what I bought here that works very well. Now I bought this back in the 90s. It's a professional undercoating gun. It was a little pricey, but then again, what's your car worth if it's all rusty? Now, it's made in Germany, and the thing that's neat is it's got a pressurized cup here. Now, to release the pressure after you get done using it, or to refill it, you turn the canister loose here, it'll vent out this little hole here. But the other thing I like about it is it has a quick coupler to change your attachments. It does come with different attachments here, where this one here blows through a door, for example, and the fluid comes out in a 360 pattern all the way around this direction here. Same with this tip here, it does the same thing. You can go up inside a pillar or something and pull it through, and this one here also does that same 360 pattern. This is the one here though that I use the most and it uh, kind of comes out in somewhat of a fan. Now how this works is it's like a regular spray gun. When you pull the lever this far, it dispenses air through the hose. When you pull it that little bit farther, that's when it adds the oil and then you can leave off and still blow the oil around to whatever your area you're working on. One other note I want to pass along quick here. That rubberized undercoating, I don't care for that stuff at all. Uh, this is a paraffin based undercoating that comes from 3M. This actually works pretty good if one didn't want to use engine oil. Now to prepare a vehicle, you're going to have to drill holes in strategic areas to get anywhere where there might be a double wall, you'd want a hole, and uh, to get in the areas there real well. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is, like on a door here, you might want to take the panel off so you know what your drill is going to hit when you go through the other side. Uh, like here, for example, I have a hole where I run that long tube through, make sure the window is up all the way. Now, there is a speaker in the door. You want to know you're not going to get oil on that. So some doors have a plastic panel on the inside. You want to know all of that before you start oiling. Now, so I make this clear, this is the plug here that I take out on a door. And then I have that real long 360 sprayer tube at the end. And then I just pull this through the door while I'm holding the trigger on the gun. The big thing is make sure your window is up at the time. And the neat thing is it preserves your window mechanisms and your door latches so everything works real sweet in years to come. Now if you don't feel like taking your door panel off, you can even cheat by just going through the water drain holes that are already provided on every door. Just take your tip of your undercoating gun and go in up through here, give her a little wolf, and the oil will sit in this ridge all along here where the door skin comes around from the outside to the inside. You know, as you know, that's where they start to rust otherwise. Now everything on the truck, I drill half inch holes, and these are the plugs that I use to cover them up. Now they got all different sizes and styles. This one here is more of a flush, and whoop, this is a recessed. You can buy these at the parts house. Then if you wish, if you want to use a regular spray gun, you can actually put the bigger hole in it, and then you can actually see with your eye inside in years to come on how everything's holding up. Then what I'll do is I'll walk you through each panel of the vehicle here and show you how I do them. Conveniently, there's always a lot of holes in certain areas which come in handy for such thing. 
uh, here, you can go up inside the hood, which will get and protect the front edge of your hood. Now you want to get the sides along the edge, and of course it'll run down in the back here too, as you have your hood open. To preserve the radiator saddle, there's plenty of pre-existing holes to get into for oiling. And the biggest part is to get down underneath on it, and where it mounts to the frame there, you want to get all that real good in these areas. Now I'm sure all of you have seen them where the top of these fenders are totally gone from rust. To eliminate that, you got to get inside the fender on the very top. Now here we have some excess holes, and you got to get all the way along that whole top of that fender to eliminate that problem. If you don't have excess holes, you're going to have to drill them. Also, another big rust area I'm sure you're familiar with would be the bottom of the fender. You got to get in from the back side. If there's not access, once again, you're going to have to drill a hole to get inside if there's a double walled area there. These battery cables here are also original for the vehicle. Quick little tip for you. You got yourself an oil can, put some oil on the terminals, and that'll preserve them. It keeps the corrosion down. Now, this here is, again, what I use for going inside and use for most of my work. Now, up inside the tailgate here, you have your linkages, and you want to spray that every direction to left and to the right to get the full latch mechanism. That way that all stays working good. Now, having a look at the tailgate here, you can see where the oils are in. Down, it sits in the bottom here, and that preserves this. And as you can see, there's no rust, and the latch, everything still works just like new. Now in the box, I'm sure you all seen where they rot out right on the top here. Well, from here to here, they always have a double wall inside. Now you got to get up inside on this with the oil. Otherwise, your salt sits in here and you got all the nasty holes along here. Let's get it up on the waist. I'll give you a tour underneath and we'll have a better look. Okay, doers, we're up in here. Well, let's have a look underneath. Now on the box side here, you can see this is where that double wall is that I was telling you about. You want to get that area real good right there. Now also, I've seen where they rust along the top edge where the bed rail would be. You want to get up in there best you can too. And of course, there's your fuel hatch. While we're in this area here, I'm going to show you a neat little trick on how to preserve your emergency brake cables. Notice I got a spark plug boot that covers the end of the cable with a hose clamp on it. Now what that does is that keeps the road slop that slams toward it from going into the cable. Now if you're ever replacing a cable, stick your new cables in a vise, hang them vertically, put a chunk of rubber hose on them, fill it with Dextron. When the Dextron runs out the other end of the cable, then you can install them and you'll never have to replace them again. Please press 1 to continue. Any of these areas where they have channels mounted and spot welded on, you want to pay real good attention to them especially. That's where the rust always seems to start. So the nice thing about the oil is it'll creep in between the areas where other stuff won't get in real well. Back here by the tail of the box, you got a lot of double areas there you got to pay close attention to. You can see also channels going across, and once again, there's that double layered edge where they start to rot, and you'll see the holes on the outside of the box. Here's a look at side B. It's been quite a while since actually I did this. I always spend a lot of time on it just doing it once, but then you're good for quite a few years after that. Actually doing this one time versus never doing it is going to be a huge advantage if you don't feel like ever doing it again. Also, you can get in the frame real good, all the way down, and always start like from the inside in the center and then work your way out. That way you're not so oil soaked by the time you get done. The wrecker panels always seem to be the first thing to go on a truck, so 
I have the access hole right here to get into the double wall. And as you can see from underneath here, then they're holding out pretty good. Now conveniently for the rocker panels, they have a rubber plug there and one up here where you can spray and then have it go all the way through the rocker to keep that intact. And here we have some front structure where the cab mounts to the frame. And once again, some more channel you want to get into real well to retain good structure. Okay, we're having a look at the front here now. And underneath here, on the front fenders, you want to get up in all the nooks and crannies there. Radiator saddle. You can see how good you get in to all them areas. Get the frame good. And of course, I always put a little bit on the axles and suspension too. Yeah, that oiling thing, that's far from my funnest job I ever do. But when you got a vehicle that runs perfect but it's all rusted out, it definitely takes the value out of it. I kind of do these videos to help you folks out so you can preserve your stuff, saving you money in the long run. So, hope this helps you out and you enjoyed the video. Stop by again, we'll see what I get into next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Tubers had to include a little bit of bonus footage. But he said he was going to take me for a ride in this car. Well, you know, when you fix stuff all day for a living, it's kind of fun once in a while just to go out and wreck on something a little bit too, I guess. Parts car? Fuel car? Yeah, why not? Well, my buddy said I could take his car for a quick lap. I thought I might be real careful with it. Well, thanks a lot, my friend, and hope you folks didn't mind a little bit of extra bonus footage.